Hello people, in this video we want to look at mastoiditis. Basically it is the inflammation of the mucosal lining of the antrum and the mastoid air cells that you can see here, right? So inflammation of all this will be mastoiditis. It happens because it is a complication of the middle ear infection, otitis media. So it is an in, intratemporal complication of otitis media which we have already seen. Do you remember this uh, video on complications of otitis media? In that we have the intratemporal complications in which you have mastoiditis and other things and you also have the intracranial complications. We are looking at what mastoiditis that is an intratemporal complications of the middle ear infection or otitis media. Basically there are two types here acute or coalescent and then you have latent or masked. Acute you can know sudden. Latent or masked means there will be slow destruction of the mastoid air cells you know the, there will be mild pain behind the ear. And there will be slow destruction of mass uh, mastoid air cells because this uh, it was not treated properly, the acute condition you can see. So this acute condition, there is yet another terminology here called as coalescent. Coalescent means what? They come together, they group together. So the air cells here, they combine, right? So that will be coalescent mastoiditis. In acute itself, acute coalescent mastoiditis, they can call it, okay? Because these air cells will coalesce together. So if you have understood guys, in this video we will be looking at what mastoiditis is, what are the causes of this, the pathology, what exactly happens, the symptoms, the signs, the investigations that you need to do, differential diagnosis, what are the other abscesses in relation to a mastoid infection, the complications and finally we will come to the treatment. Okay, then. Uh, Similarly, we will do for the latent one also a little. Okay, mainly we will focus on acute mastoiditis. So, what is mastoiditis? It is the inflammation of the mucosal lining of the antrum and mastoid air cell system. Okay, so where is all this? So, if this is your middle ear, right? They have shown middle ear here. And behind that, whatever you have? Aditus, antrum and this is the mastoid air cells. So, what are they saying? The inflammation of the mucosal lining of the antrum and mastoid air cells. So, inflammation of all this, this is going to be called as mastoiditis. So, this is behind your ear. So, this is how acute mastoiditis looks like. The pinna is pushed downward and forward. So, the term mastoiditis is used when the infection spreads from the mucosa lining the mastoid air cells to involve the bony wall of the mastoid air cell system. So, they are saying when it goes from the mucosa to involve the bony walls, then only they are calling this mastoiditis word it seems. Okay. Guys, now we are moving on to the etiology. Okay. So, where are we in the status? Look at this. We have finished an introduction. Now, we are looking at the etiology. What is the etiology? Basically, it follows acute superative otitis media. It accompanies or follows this ASOM. Okay. Based on the virulence of the organism, or the how how good the immunity of the patient is, right? Then uh, it depends on whether this acute mastoiditis will happen or not following this ASOM. And here they want to blame beta hemolytic streptococcus. This is the one uh, which is the cause of the acute necrotizing otitis media, isn't it? So they want to blame this one. Beta hemolytic streptococcus is the most causative organism. Okay, though there are other organisms. That is the etiology, guys. Now let's move on to what. Pathology, okay, pathology here. Pathology, what will happen? There is pus, which this production of pus under tension, okay. So, there is lot of pus, lot of tension, then the drainage of the pus is impeded. So, what is happening? From middle ear, looks like everything is coming this side, right? Hyperemia and engorgement of mucosa. Let's focus here. Basically, when the pus is there and there is lot of tension and then the bony wall of this mastoid air cells are getting affected, then only they are calling it as mastoiditis. That's what they said. What is happen happening here? Hyperemic decalcification. Decalcification is the word that you will have to write here, okay, of the bony wall of the mastoid air cells. And what happens? All these air cells will start coalescing. Right, this is what is coalescence of mastoid air cells, a single irregular cavity filled with pus. So, full of pus, single irregular cavity, irregular cavity filled with pus. This is empyema of mastoid. Pi is what pus, empyema of mastoid. The pus may break through the mastoid cortex, leading to subperiosteal abscess, which may burst on surface, leading to fistula. Also, let us look at this. 
Look at this image here. Burst mastoid abscess exuding pus. Mastoid fistula. See, this is a fistula. So, pathology, you have to write only two terms, guys. Production of pus under tension, hyperemic dis decalcification, and osteoclast resorption of bony walls. Osteoclast is a bad thing, right? It is going to resorb uh, the uh, bone uh, osteocytes. So, osteoclastic resorption of bony walls. So, you have to write bone, bone, bone is getting destroyed here. All the air cells are coalescing. There is a um, pus filled irregular cavity M, that is empyema of mastoid. Okay, then there can be a fistula formed. Shall we move on to the next topic? What is the next topic? Symptoms and then signs. These are the clinical features. Let us look at the clinical features. What do you think guys these people will complain of? Pain behind the ear. Very good. There is um, uh, even though the otitis media has gone, there is pain behind the ear. That means it has already gone to the mastoid, right? Fever, obviously it's an infection, so fever. Ear discharge, the discharge um, is profuse and increases in purulence, okay? So basically, um, any persistence of the discharge beyond three weeks, that means to say it is not from the ear, uh, it can be from the mastoid also that the discharge is coming. So, only three things they mentioned here is it. Pain behind the ear, fever and ear discharge. Ear discharge that persists. Pain behind the ear that persists. That's what you have to understand here. Everything that persists. So, it is not just otitis media. There's something happening here. It's a complication. The mastoid also has got affected. So, we are done with the symptoms. Now, let's move on to the signs. Signs, what will you, what will you see? Mastoid tenderness? Yes, you will see there is tenderness which is elicited by pressure over the middle of the mastoid process you should always compare this tenderness with the healthy side okay then ear discharge you will see that there is a ear discharge which is persistent right and this is a pulsatile kind of a discharge lighthouse effect the pus is coming from where from the tympanic membrane moving on guys there is sagging of the posterior superior meatal wall there is sagging of the posterior superior meatal wall and why is this because of petrocytis okay so the uh, bone is affected Petrocytis, uh, this is the bony part, uh, party wall between the antrum and the bony canal, your meatal wall basically. Perforation of tympanic membrane, that's how the discharge is coming, right? And um, the perforation will appear as a nipple-like protrusion, yeah, through which the pus comes out. And how will the mastoid appear to you? Swelling over the mastoid, you should see the swelling over the mastoid. It will give a smooth ironed out feel, okay? Then if it has burst, then there can be a fistula, right? That's what you will see. Hearing loss will be there, guys. What type of hearing loss? Conductive hearing loss, middle ear is affected. General findings, you will see that the patient will have fever. They appear ill and they'll appear toxic. So what are the signs that you will elicit, guys? Um, mastoid tenderness, ironed out mastoid, the ear discharge, in then perforation of the tympanic membrane, sagging of the posterior superior meatal wall. Then hearing loss, general findings, fever, toxic look. So these will be the signs. So we are done with the signs. Now let's move on to investigations. Guys, look at the lighthouse effect here. When the, the ear discharge is there. Okay. Now let's see what investigations you need to do. So we are done with the signs. Let's look at the investigations. Investigations you will do. Uh, this uh, blood count because infection you will see leukocytosis then you will see that is neutrophils are more like then ESR is raised they are saying then when you do x-ray of the mastoid you will see uh, or the CT scan of the temporal bone there is clouding of the air cells right because there is lot of exudate right there is clouding of these air cells of the in the mastoid and the partitions between these air cells are indistinct because bone bone decalcification right so there is coalescence Okay, so where were we? We understood that the air cells uh, partition are indistinct. They all have coalesced together. Then you can do um, for uh, microbiology, culture and sensitivity, you can take your swab, okay, of the discharge. So to know which organism it is. These are the investigations. So what are the investigations for mastoiditis? Discharge, you can do culture and sensitivity. You can do x-ray of the mastoid to see the coalescence. Yes, then you can uh, do what else? Uh, leukocytosis and ESR. That is it, right? Pretty straightforward. Okay, we are done with investigations. Then differential diagnosis. Uh, what are the differentials for an acute mastoiditis? 
there can be separation of the mastoid lymph nodes okay it could be a it could be actually just a scalp infection or there could be furunculosis of the meatus so there could be furunculosis of the meatus which you should not confuse with acute mastoiditis how will you know because acute mastoiditis will is coming only after an otitis media so otitis media history you should ask is there otitis media then only there will be this right so in this uh, furunculosis of meatus there will be absence of a preceding acute otitis media looks like okay that's what they are saying here then here uh, in furunculosis you don't have any mucoid or mucopurulent discharge because apparently mucus secretion is not possible by the external ear looks like and the tympanic membrane is perfectly normal that's what you should understand here this because it is not middle ear mastoid or any confusion so tympanic membrane is perfectly fine because this is furunculosis of the meatus it's an external ear condition then when you do x-ray of mastoid obviously everything will be clear then if infected sebaceous cyst so don't confuse with that also so what are the differentials just three differentials they're telling here superation of the mastoid lymph nodes remember this mastoid lymph nodes are where see here mastoid lymph nodes or something where the tro auricular looks like that arrow is here behind the ear so it could be a superation of those and that could be a scalp infection or it could be a furunculosis of the meatus just know that the tympanic membrane will be perfectly fine because it's an external ear condition this one then it could be an infected sebaceous cyst okay so this these are the differentials for your acute mastoiditis okay now let's move on to this one guys abscesses in relation to mastoid infection so where are we we are looking at this one abscesses in relation to mastoid infection right so there are many uh, abscesses in relation to mastoid infection we'll we'll just look at their names okay so here are all the names first look at this photo abscesses in relation to mastoid you have the post auricular zygomatic basalt basalt is here zygomatic is here and post auricular three things they have mentioned here and from the posterior they are looking at this is sitelis abscess this one is still post auricular and this one is basalt so four they are telling you post auricular zygomatic basalt and sitelis right totally four you have learned here in this photo otherwise still so many are there post auricular zygomatic basalt sitelis that is behind the mastoid then you have lux abscess that is meatal abscess and then you have parapharyngeal or retropharyngeal abscess okay so uh, about each of these they have given here so post auricular is what it is commonest form um, and this is what will happen in this pinna is displaced forward outward downward etc here they are showing the zygomatic abscess guys zygomatic abscess okay frontal view lateral view so this is because of the infection of the zygomatic air cells then you have the basal abscess this is when the pus breaks through the thin medial side okay and it presents um, the abscess may lie deep to the sternocleidomastoid okay so look at this so here you have the sternocleidomastoid muscle right here and uh, deep to it the pus is there see the pus is here and it's coming deep to the sternocleidomastoid and also under this other muscle so the abscess may lie deep to the sternocleidomastoid okay or follow the posterior belly of digastric or present in the upper part of the posterior angle reach the parapharyngeal space carotid vessels okay so many things remember basal abscess so just remember we are not going to too many details basically a basal abscess is one of them before that you saw zygomatic then you saw post auricular then still three more are left right let's look at them next one please meatal abscess or lux abscess so where is it going external osseous meatus okay meatal abscess then behind the mastoid or sitelis abscess more towards the occipital bone it says here right more towards the occipital bone that will be the sitelis abscess then you have the parapharyngeal space infection and retropharyngeal abscess guys basically guys you have the around the pharynx you have the parapharyngeal space and behind it you have the retropharyngeal space right so all these spaces can get infected so can you tell the abscesses in relation to the mastoid infection can you name all the six 
yes you have the post auricular then you have the zygomatic then you have the basal then you have the meatal then the stelly then the parapharyngeal and retropharyngeal very good so we are done with this luxus the meatal okay luxus meatal so we're done with the abscesses in relation to mastoid infection now what happens if you leave this mastoiditis as it is what are the complications complications guys complications subperiosteal abscess subperiosteal abscess labyrinthitis your inner ear facial paralysis face face paralysis petrocytis extradural abscess subdural abscess meningitis brain abscess lateral sinus thrombophlebitis and otic hydrocephalus so what are the complications can you name them come on subperiosteal abscess yes subperiosteal abscess labyrinthitis very good petrocytis extradural abscess subdural abscess meningitis brain abscess lateral sinus thrombophlebitis otic hydrocephalus what did we forget did we forget something facial paralysis yes facial paralysis okay so we are done with complications guys now we have to go to treatment treatment let's look at the treatment so you will hospitalize the patient okay let's hospitalize the patient then give antibiotics amoxicillin ampicillin then you will get sensitivity report then you can give the exact antibiotic which it is sensitive to anaerobic organisms means you will have to give chloramphenicol metronidazole right Myringotomy, uh, basically to drain it, isn't it? Why are you doing? Why are you doing a myringotomy? If there is pus under tension, if you do myringotomy, then you will relieve the tension. If it doesn't go away with antibiotics alone, then only I think they are doing all this. Cortical mastoidectomy, guys. When will you do cortical mastoidectomy? Cortical mastoidectomy you will do if there is subperiosteal abscess. Looks like that's a complication. Sagging of the superior. posterior superior meatal wall positive reservoir sign that is it fills with pus immediately you drain it and again it will fill with pus that is reservoir sign it's there then you do cortical mastoidectomy then if there is no change in the patient's condition or if the patient's condition worsens even with you know adequate medical treatment if you give after 48 hours it is not improving mastoiditis leading to complications that is if there are facial paralysis labyrinthitis intracranial complications all this you will do what is the aim of um, aim of cortical mastoidectomy it is to ex enterate all the mastoid air cells you're going to remove all of them is it remove any pockets of pus right adequate antibiotic treatment must be continued even after after cortical mastoidectomy this word ex enteration means what it is to remove remove the contents of it so you will remove the contents of the mastoid looks like right excentrate all the mastoid air cells great we are already done with the treatment so the only thing that is left is mast latent mastoid it is very little we will look at it basically there is slow destruction of mastoid air cells because inadequate antibiotic therapy was given there is mild pain behind the uh, uh, ear for all these conditions blame ch children okay which means children are more affected by otitis media and mastoid it is etc tenderness you will elicit again there will be conductive hearing loss obviously What is the treatment again? Cortical mastoidectomy. Okay, let's take a recap, guys. So what did we want to look at in this video? We wanted to look at what mastoiditis is. Basically, it is the inflammation of the mucosa of the antrum and the air cells, uh, and uh, this is usually a complication of otitis media. Okay. It is an intratemporal complication of otitis media. There are two types here: acute coalescent, uh, latent, or masked. Acute uh, uh, coalescent means all the air cells will come together. Latent or masked is uh, when you give inadequate treatment there can be slow destruction of the mastoid air cells and uh, very mild pain behind the uh, ear okay so basically we have looked at in this video what uh, acute mastoiditis is etc we so we looked at the middle ear cleft right so here's your middle ear attic aditus antrum the mastoid air cells so basically mastoiditis is where this whole thing is affected there is basically bone destruction which is going to coalesce these air cells so that is what is coalescent mastoiditis right so what is happening here after an uh, acute uh, suppurative otitis media because of the tension of the pus and if the organism is very virulent and the immunity of the patient is very low this can uh, the middle ear infection 
can uh, spread into the mastoid right so children are affected more here here they are blaming beta hemolytic streptococcus remember and uh, basically there is production of pus under tension and then there is hyperemic decalcification that is bone destruction is happening osteoclast resorption of bony wall so these air cells will um, coalesce together okay and then they will be completely filled with pus okay then there can be um, let's move on uh, symptoms you will see that there will be pain behind the ear uh, persistent pain behind the ear even after this otitis media goes away fever and ear discharge again persistent even after your otitis media as a doctor what signs will you see tenderness um, you will see tenderness right mastoid tenderness you will see swelling over the mastoid ear discharge lighthouse signs sagging of the posterior meat, uh, posterior superior meatal wall because of petrocytis bony bone is getting destroyed remember perforation of the tympanic membrane right then you will see now basically uh, remember here tympanic membrane is affected right what else then you will see that the people can have fever and they can have toxic look okay those are the signs that we saw then what were the investigations blood investigations you will see more neutrophils esr is more then if you do ear swab for the discharge you will see culture and sensitivity report which organism x-ray of the mastoid if you see you will see clouding of air cells because of pus cells and the air cells have all coalesced because the bone destruction is happening right then differential diagnosis you should remember um, a superation of the mastoid lymph nodes uh, it could uh, it could also be a pharyngosis of the meatus but the tympanic membrane in this pharyngosis will be perfect then there it could also be an infected sebaceous cyst you need to differentiate abscesses in relation to mastoid infection you have the post auricular abscess zygomatic abscess uh, this one is what basal abscess sitli abscess then you have the uh, meatal abscess or the lux abscess then you have the parapharyngeal or the retropharyngeal abscess these are the abscesses in relationship to the mastoid infection all right then what else we saw the complications of acute mastoiditis the complications are subperiosteal abscess labyrinthitis facial paralysis petrocytis extradural abscess subdural abscess meningitis brain abscess lateral sinus thrombophlebitis and otic hi otic is it otitic hydrocephalus guys treatment finally we reach treatment where you are going to give what you will hospitalize hospitalize the person give antibiotics and um, like amoxicillin ampicillin then do culture sensitivity you will get whether which organism and which antibiotic to give if it is anaerobic you can consider giving metronidazole or flora uh, chloramphenicol myringotomy to relieve the pus under tension cortical mastoidectomy you will do only if there are complications right or if there is a reservoir sign guys once you drain the pus again the pus is getting filled the patient's condition is not improving or it is deteriorating even further there is sagging of the posterior superior meatal wall right basically the aim of the cortical mastoidectomy is so that you will remove all these air cells and any pockets of pus and still you have to continue it with antibiotic treatment then uh, the last thing we finished acute guys we finished the acute mastoiditis then there is something called as a latent or masked mastoiditis basically that one is um, where there is slow destruction of the mastoid air cells guys here there is this can happen because of inadequate treatment right and there is uh, usually a child with mild pain behind the ear which persists you know there is conductive hearing loss tympanic membrane appears uh, uh, thick okay and there can be tenderness over the mastoid so again here treatment they are suggesting cortical mastoidectomy with antibiotics that's all guys in this video we have looked at mastoiditis that's all for now bye bye